Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, or considering that this is a kind of a new theme and direction for the channel, uh, welcome to it. Uh, I am Zach, and primarily this channel is focused on all of my outdoors content, which to this point is fishing and birding. Now, I talked about like some of my photography gear um, for birding and for wildlife and everyday usage and stuff on my old channel. I am going to bring back um, kind of like the tech portion of it to this channel as well, so... Um, I'm filming this video first. I was actually going to do my birding video first. However, um, <laughs> I decided to just leave three things in my car and I don't feel like going to get them before work. Um, so I'm going to have to do that a little bit later. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a video on like optics. So like spotting scopes, binoculars, um, my beginner gear, um, my upgraded gear camera equipment like my telephoto lenses and stuff like that um so i am going to be discussing some of that in the future it won't be taking away from my normal wednesday birding and friday fishing schedule it'll just be essentially adding to it um i don't want this to be an everyday channel um that is what my main channel is for with video games and legos and comics and stuff like that um however i just made one of the most exciting fun purchases um, of my life. Uh, actually, uh, two of them. Uh, we're going to be focusing on one of them today. Um, the other one's just really hard to do indoors, and that is my very first telescope that I've bought. Um, I had one previously, however, it is ginormous, and it was a gift um, from a teacher of mine a long time ago, and it is just impossible to build, like, not even build, just do in my office. So, um, if you're like me, and you've been spending your life staring up at the stars, wondering what you can see, and uh, hey, I really want to take a picture of that. Well, it's never been a better time, in my opinion. Uh, behind me is the relatively new ZWO Sea Star S50. I call this thing the Star Seeker, like nobody's business. Why? I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's the ADHD. Maybe I like it more. I don't know. This is a de dedicated astrophotography camera, and I'm going to break it out and move it over here, and we can actually take a look at it in a little bit. Um, it is fantastic. It is pretty much entirely driven by your phone or a tablet. Um, I would honestly dedicate a tablet to this at this point. Um, I, I love it that much. I've used it a few times, and I decided I wanted to do a video on it. I would like to add some astrophotography with this camera to the channel, however, we've had three clear nights in the past 60 plus days here, and it's just, it hasn't even been great. Last night I tried to get more photos of the uh, Orion Nebula, and it, quite literally we had 15 minutes of light, or, um, of no cloud cover. It was unfortunate. Um, I could see a little bit. It was great. <laughs> but this thing is fantastic. Um, it is a life and a game changer. It really is. Um, it is a smart all-in-one telescope slash astrophotography unit um, that is primarily based for deep space object or DSOs. So if you're looking for the best camera to take a picture of the moon, this isn't it. It has a lunar mode and I got my best fi uh, picture ever of the moon with it. However, for planets... It isn't the best, and it's not designed for that. It is designed for nebula, galaxies, um, clouds, star clusters, these deep space objects. Um, and it depends also, like there is a light pollution filter, there is a solar filter. Depending on what you want to do with this object, there are some kits you can buy with it. I have the base unit, which comes with the solar filter. Um, it is a 6,000 mAh battery attached to it inside of it as well, uh, and charged via USB-C. Now, if you're going to be using this for long periods of time, which is basically the main way you're going to be using this, um, dedicate in some form of smaller battery, um, whether you use a Celestron-like battery pack, which is what I'm going to get for it, or for now, I'm just using a huge USB-C uh, power bank for it. Um, the battery life is solid. However, again, I'm in the middle of winter here in Pennsylvania, so it drains the battery pretty darn fast it's really solid for pretty high temperatures um it's pretty decent it has like a anti-do mode as well um definitely make sure you don't leave it outside in the rain or anything like that but um this is meant to give you as much exposure time as you can the main reason being when you're looking at your phone and you're actually doing this for the first time through the sky atlas let's say you're going to drive it to um what's well, a good starter andromeda galaxy m31 i believe um, you type in Andromeda Galaxy or you just go to the stargazing and you can see what is best today, um, what's best for my area, the weather, how much of the moon is exposed, like all of that good stuff. There's a huge screen and it is fantastic and it gives you all of the information for it. Um, also, this is going to be my introduction to astrophotography as well. I'm not the channel to go to learn to for this. Um, I believe Astro Backyard is my favorite. Um, he is fantastic. He did a full review over this. I bought it the minute I watched that video. Um, it is amazing. 
It also retails for just a little bit over $500, and it takes some time to get, even through Amazon or ZWO directly or High Point Scientific, wherever you're going to be ordering this from, if you choose to, um, it will take a bit. I know there was a very big waiting period when it first came out because it is ungodly cheap for what it does and the quality that it is. Um, but it takes about 15 to 30 days plus to get it. So um, I know we're all in instant gratification mode, but um, it does take a little bit to get. I bought mine through Amazon, through ZWO, and it took about two to three weeks, but that doesn't bother me at all. Um, but it is fantastic. So if you're looking for every technical point, I guarantee I will not be covering all those in this episode. Um, however, I just kind of wanted to, you know, give my two cents. And if you're a pretty much pure beginner astrophotographer like me, you know, you took a few pictures with your phone and with your DSLR or mirrorless camera, we're in the same boat. And uh, that's kind of why I like doing these. Um, same thing with like my, my birding, you know, uh, basic photographer, you know, it, it was intimidating for me to go to these places where to these people who have been doing this for so many years and it's just flawless they know what they're doing they're amazing they have ten thousand dollar cameras and stuff like that i like starting from kind of the beginner standpoint um and i'm looking forward to trying to do this like maybe every sunday every other sunday something like that um i'm recording this right bef well, i'm recording it right before the planet of uh the parade of planets on february 28th i hope i can do something with that for this channel however it's a cloud warning all day long so We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to unbox this thing for you guys. We're going to take a look at it. I'll give you some more of the statistics behind it. Um, but it is fantastic. Now, I'm recording this with my phone, um, so I'm not going to be able to drive it too much. Um, but in the future, I would like to start doing like, oh, here's the Orion Nebula for my first episode. Um, my, my cat is trying to attack my fish tank. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of looking off to the side. Um, I've, uh, it's feeding time, so she's very excited for them. And um, basically, I would love to do, okay, tonight we're focusing on um, the Milky Way galaxy, like trying to get an arm extension, or tonight we're doing Orion's Nebula or the Horsehead Nebula. And there's all kinds of difficulty, and depending on where you are in the world, the time of the year, the time of the day, the altitude, tree cover, light pollution, cloud cover, all that stuff, is stuff to take into account because it can either make or break your day. Um, your biggest thing is exposure time. You want to be able to have your camera sit and stare at Mars, not your best target, but Mars, let's just say, for as long as possible. And that exposure time is how you get the really deep images. Um, a lot of people think you can just buy a really expensive camera, point it at something and get a really good picture in the sky. Not really how it works. You need a tracker, you need deep sky imaging. Um, you need the ability to have that exposure time and then the platform to actually like, stack those images and all that good stuff. Again, not the YouTuber to do that for you. Um, <laughs> this is a very basic intro to the camera that I chose. And if you're a beginner looking to start out like I am, this is arguably one of the best ways to do so. So now let's get this thing unboxed and talk to you guys a little bit more about it. Side note, I apologize if you guys can hear my computer. It is editing a very long video game playthrough right now. Um, so it is very angry just under this desk. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've heard the computer before. The alien where I runs like a jet engine, but hey, liquid cooling is our friend. Um, so before I forget to cover it, one really important portion of it is it comes with an awesome carrying case. This thing is some serious uh, protection inside of it. Really nice collapsible handle. Um, I know this is a very boring detail, but you know, protecting your gear is obviously important and it comes with a really solid kit so you do not in my opinion need to really upgrade that or get something special i'm sure if you want to you can but um it's definitely satisfactory enough comes with the charging cable of course some instruction manuals and the solar filter in this nice little container i have not tried this out yet i'm actually i'm really excited to do so um it is a downpour i think outside right now so it is what it is that little solar filter there you can again purchase some expansion packs and stuff for it too. Um, I bought just the direct version and it's perfectly fine to start with. It comes with this carbon fiber tripod, which is actually really sturdy and really solid. Um, I was using this in some wind. Um, it extends one row, so it's not going to be the tallest thing in the world, but in my opinion, it works out pretty well. Um, from the recommendations that I've seen, if you want to purchase a separate tripod, which breaks down really easily into its little storage container in there, a surveyor's tripod so I know somebody was using like the DeWalt or the Cobalt one um, <laughs> there are some pretty decent ones for it um, just make sure that you're getting a good tripod um, I know that is if you're getting started with photography in any way and I was the exact same way you don't want to spend a lot on a tripod because it's not exciting it is your saving grace a good tripod sometimes means the entire world and let's face it you're spending 
a lot of money usually for things going on tripods. So you want to make sure you have a good one. I love this little thing. It isn't heavy. Um, you were essentially transporting it in the little briefcase. Anyways, so it works out extremely well. Um, I absolutely adore it, and I think it works out really, really well. But again, if you want a taller one, you can do so. Um, I definitely can see the point of behind uh, a short one or a tall one. So, you know, again, everyone's situation is different. I will get a taller one for it eventually, um, just for some different situations or just because I want a different tripod for it. Um, but it is definitely satisfactory regardless. The little camera, this is it. That is compared to a decent sized human hand. That is it. It is relatively small. I mean, just in comparison to like, yeah. it's not bad at all. Um, it isn't very heavy. Like, obviously it has a little bit of weight to it, which is a good sign, but um, it is more than manageable for anybody out there that's looking to use it. Um, this portion right here is the actual arm. When you start up this bad boy for the very first time, the arm will actually open up and it can drive itself from there. Once you have it perched on the tripod, it will drive itself to whatever location. Um, if it is obstructed, buy something um you will see it like it's struggling to actually target it or if there's a tree or just something in the way um tree branch plant whatever is uh essentially obstructing the view it will tell you hey image obstructed please move to target area um so you know the tree might be in front of andromeda galaxy you just might have to wait for the um, elevation and stuff to actually go up for the altitude um but there are definitely ways to go around it um I, I i'm an idiot and i bought a couple stickers to put on this so it'll be different when we come video time um but it is pretty straightforward we have our little power button back here and then once we start this bad boy up, you can see the power bars on the bottom of it, and then you have the USB-C port right back here. It is awesome. Like I, I'm serious. This thing is fantastic. Um, it, it drives through the Seastar app available in the App Store on your phone, which is pretty darn awesome. And then I pulled up ZWO's uh, or the Seastar website as well. It does say 15 to 30 days currently. Um, now, the resolution on this bad boy is going to be 1920 by 1080, so this is not going to be a 4K camera. However, this is outperforming stuff that is thousands of dollars more. So, you know, it is pretty darn awesome. It is two and a half kilograms, so again, pretty light. Um, definitely more than reasonable for most people. Um, you'll be connecting to this Wi-Fi system, so your phone will not be able to use Wi-Fi while you're connected to it, so... Um, definitely make sure that you're pretty focused on this guy. Um, the focal ratio, if you guys are interested, is an F5, and then it is a 250 millimeter focal length. Um, now, what is really cool, um, and when you look at like optical lenses and stuff like this, the main reason that people um, think that this should rightfully be way more expensive is a triple APO optical lens, and it is unbelievable for this price. Like the pictures that are available on this thing are disgusting. <laughs> it's just insane um, what you can do. And again, you have the dew heater, um, which I do recommend turning on. I constantly forget about it, so definitely make sure that you're smarter than I am with some of this stuff. Um, you know, there is that solar filter for solar mode. Just obviously be careful. Don't point it at it without it. Like, be smart about solar... Um, photography and all that good stuff there's also a lunar mode again this isn't great for planets um there are better options out there however if you're looking for an amazing all-in-one starter unit and you're like me that wants to do a little bit of everything this is unbelievable the reviews for this thing across the board are fantastic and disgusting in every way and it is an absolute game changer and like i'll be honest and this is going to sound very nerdy it's a life changer I dreamed my entire life of seeing a nebula for the first time. And when you're driving it on your phone, you're seeing a live view of something tens of thousands to millions of light years away. And this little camera, for under $1,000, under $500, technically it's 500 exactly, before tax, that is insane. And as for the working temperature here, um, they do recommend it's between zero and 40 degrees Celsius. That is a huge range that almost nobody is going to have a problem with. Um, it can store 64 gigabytes of storage as well. Um, I just wanted to kind of touch on all of those points. Transmission mode, um, Bluetooth 5.0, USB-C, and then for the Wi-Fi capabilities is 5G and then 2.4G as well. So you have pretty much anything that you're going to need here. Um, and again, not perfect for planets, 
but it's still going to get you there. My first shot with Jupiter in it, with 30 seconds of exposure time, was four moons in orbit around it and Jupiter. That's pretty darn cool. So this thing is an absolute workhorse. Again, if you're looking to get into astrophotography, I'm not going to say that this is going to be better than your neighbor's $10,000 camera, but it shouldn't be. This is an easy way to get started for a really low cost in what is an extremely expensive hobby. Game changer, life changer. It is amazing. Um, definitely check out more reviews if you guys are interested in this product. Um, I have zero regrets. It is fantastic. Um, there is also a landscape mode. I have not tried it out. Um, if you're looking for a landscape camera, I doubt this is your best option. But again, I have not tried it out, so I don't want to say definitively that it is yes or not. However, definitely if you're looking at this camera and you're wondering if it's too good to be true, it kind of is. Now, honestly, that was my whole thing. I'm like, how on earth can something for $500 be this good? And I couldn't believe it. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Again, this is my very first uh, toe dip into the water that is astrophotography. And it is incredible. And I mean this to be an incredibly positive review. I love it to death. It is insanely awesome. Um, I talked to a couple of my buddies, I think, into getting it now. And, you know, a buddy of mine has kids who are interested in space. What better way to show your kids <laughs> how amazing it can be than one of these? Now, I bought a telescope and this at the exact same time. Uh, the telescope that I got is the 130 um, Celestron 130. I believe it's the Newtonian reflector um, from the Nexstar program. Uh, no, StarSense, sorry. I bought StarSense over Nexstar. That one is a little bit better for planets. So I bought a telescope that was better for planets than it is for deep sky objects. And I bought the camera that's better for deep sky objects than it is for uh, planets. That's a whole separate video. I do want to do one on the telescope that I chose. However, I have not gotten to break it out, break it out and use it yet. Um, again, when you have very limited uh, <laughs> time in cloud to cover, it has been a nonsensical thing for a long time. It is what it is. If you're not quite looking to spend $500, you can get the S30 as well. It is essentially just the smaller version of this bad boy. Um, it is a pre-sale item on their website right now. It is smaller. It retails for $349. Now, I have not used it. Essentially, instead of having a 50 millimeter aperture, that one has 130. Focal length is 150 versus 240, I believe it was. Um, so it's essentially just a smaller version. However, if you're on a budget, you know, it is what it is. It's still going to be pretty darn awesome. It looks like their pre-orders from December 10th onward um, is shipping in March. So coming up pretty darn soon, depending on when this video actually reaches you guys. Um, it may or may not be available currently. But yeah, if you guys aren't interested in the $500 version, again, there's a $349 version. The reviews are still really solid. Um, of course, it is going to be um, not quite as strong or powerful as this bad boy here, but it's still a really cool way to get started. And again, for the price point, you almost can't beat these guys. But that's going to do it for my very first uh, intro to astrophotography. Look forward to following along on the journey once the darn clouds clear. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to do so. Again, I'm going to aim for probably once a week like I do fishing and birding. However, just like birding, uh, weather permitting is going to be the biggest thing. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited, guys. If you're interested, definitely check it out. But yeah, stars limits out there, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.